Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And that breaking news is out of Dearborn Heights where a young girl has been hit and killed while crossing the street. Witnesses say a doctor inside a nearby business heard the commotion and tried to revive her but couldn't. This happened on Telegraph near Ford Road in Dearborn Heights. Coco McAvoy is now on the scene. Coco, what are you learning from witnesses? A witness that we spoke to is just heartbroken over the news. Now, police just cleared the scene out here a few minutes ago, but they tell us that a 12 year old girl was hit and killed by a car. Now, let's show you some video that we shot out here on the scene. Now, this again scene was just cleared a few minutes ago. We've spoken to witnesses out here on scene. One witness specifically was at the barber shop before it happened. He actually saw the 12 year old girl and his her twin brother walking past the barber shop. They made eye contact and then a few minutes later the 12 year old girl and her twin brother were crossing the street and that 12 year old girl was hit by a car and she was killed. Now the driver of that vehicle did stop but we want to let you hear from that witness who also described a good Samaritan who tried to help. I thought as the impact happened it was a car but I saw the boy and the girl walk right past me. I didn't think it would be her. So I was hoping as walking up to it, it would be just a car. And then that's when I saw like her brother just running up, screaming, oh my God. And I called immediately, 911, another guy, God bless his soul, that was inside the barbershop getting a haircut with me. And he was a, he's a doctor himself. And he went up to try to help her as much as he can before the police got there. But unfortunately, that 12 year old girl did pass away. Now we are working to learn more information from police. And as soon as we learn more, we'll make sure to update you. Back to you. All right, thank you, Coco. New information now on a story we brought you as breaking news earlier tonight at six. A 26 year old Detroit man shot in a shootout near I-94 in St. Clair Shores today. Police say two cars went off the freeway. They exited the freeway at 10 mile. The people inside those cars, they started firing at each other. The victim was shot in the leg and is expected to be OK. We're told the other driver took off. Please tell us they're searching for a black four door sports car. We're about to enter day 28 of the UAW strike and today members learned they will be paid a little bit more to walk the picket line. The UAW voted today to increase strike pay by $25 to $275 per week. They've also agreed to allow members to take on part-time jobs as long as they continue to walk the picket line. Previously, members could not collect strike pay if part-time work paid them more. Negotiators from the UAW and GM were back at the bar bargaining table today. The UAW put forth a new counteroffer late last night. Getting our first look at the forecast on a very chilly Saturday night. It was. Let's get over to Andrew, see what we can expect for Sunday. Well, Sandra and Steve already getting colder in some spots with those temperatures being in the 30s. Take a look. 36 already for our friends over in Port Huron. Now, don't get me wrong. It's still chilly across all of southeast Michigan. We're looking at 46 degrees right now in, uh, over at Metro Airport, 38 near some of those colder valleys right around Ann Arbor. So if it's a late night for you, you're still going out. Make sure you have your jackets, maybe a layer underneath, and certainly a hat in order to stay warm. 49 degrees over at City Airport. That's one of our higher temperatures, but still in that chilly zone. And winds, they've died down, but still pretty breezy. Winds anywhere from 6 to about 12 or 13 miles per hour. But it remains dry late night tonight and overnight. By morning, temperatures down to about 40 here in town, middle and upper 30s in neighboring communities. And we'll see a beautiful sunrise on Sunday. Sunday afternoon, bit of a different story. We'll talk more about that and your seven day forecast coming up. Thank you, Andrew. An investigation is underway tonight after five people are shot. It happened outside of a bar in East Point. It happened right around two this morning at the last call bar, which is on 10 mile near Hayes. Police say the shooting was sparked by a fight that happened outside of the bar. A man fired a semi-automatic and then took off in a silver Honda Ridgeline. Police tell us one person was killed. A neighbor was startled awake when he heard the commotion. Yeah, it was a madhouse after the shots rang off. Police say they're asking anyone who has any information to come forward. A family struck by a tragedy, then victimized by crime. As they mourn the loss of a 38-year-old man in a fire, 
thieves broke into their burned home and stole something very precious. Sean Lay spoke to the family and learned what police are doing to help. A family here in Allen Park is hurting this week in a sudden flash kitchen fire and a 38 year old man loses his life and in a low blow for this family. After the fire was put out, someone broke in and stole from the victim's home. He was my wolf for 19 years. Prayers this weekend for a heartbroken family. Their rock, Jeremy Bodette, was taken from them around 5 o'clock this past Wednesday afternoon. It was Bodette's day off. He was home cooking a birthday dinner for their nephew. Jeremy went to take a shower, a flash fire in the kitchen, and the smoke overwhelmed the 38-year-old and the family pets. His wife, Samantha, was at work teaching at Wayne State at the time. And he loved me and did everything for me. And my dogs and my cat, they were my family. He took care of all of us. Oh. To add insult to an already traumatic situation, Samantha says when firefighters left around midnight, someone opened a window, got inside, and stole family heirloom jewelry. So they waited and they watched. They stole all my jewelry, you know, and again, it doesn't, it's not worth anything to me but sentimental it's not valuable i'm not worried about that i'm it's from my dad my jeremy you know my grandparents it's gone as police investigate jeremy would have been at his nephew's youth football game on saturday the river ruse junior panthers are playing the game in his honor what are you gonna do if you score point up look up the sky say this is for you <laughs> and i am lost but i have got the family has been told by Allen Park Police that extra patrols will be by the house, making sure no one breaks in again as this family tries to recover from this tragedy. In Allen Park, Sean Lay, Local 4. How much can a family endure? A GoFundMe page has been set up to help that family rebuild and pay for the funeral. You can find details on our website at clickondetroit.com. A uh, trip to the playground is about to get better for all the kids in Commerce Township. Today, one of the biggest barrier-free playgrounds opened up. It's called Scarlet's Playground, and it's accessible for every child, including kids with disabilities. The nonprofit called Scarlet Smile raised money to pay for the park. They wanted a place where all kids, no matter what, had a chance to play.